Chris Lee and Blake Lovell of Southeastern 14 here to preview SEC basketball games for Tuesday night, February 14th. That's Valentine's Day. We got three games to preview. We will do those in order of tip off. And we do not have the lines. We're doing this Monday morning. But what we do have is four reliable computers that give us what they think the lines should be. Uh, those are Ken Pomeroy, Bart Torvik, ESPN's BPI, and Jeff Sagarin. So we will average those four, give you an estimated line. We will also give you a percentage of victory according to three of those four computers. Sagarin doesn't give that. But anyway, we will run through those as we do these. First game up, and our apologies, we got a little bit of an internet delay potentially here. But we're going to do the best we can this morning while they work on our internet here in my community. Vanderbilt going to South Carolina. Tip off 530 Central. You can see that on the SEC network. The Commodores are about five and a half point favorites in Columbia where the Gamecocks have not played well. They played this game once to open the SEC season. That was in Nashville. Vanderbilt won that one in overtime. The Commodores have about a 71% chance to win, according to the computers. And frankly, I like Vandy's chances better than that given the way the Commodores are playing lately and the way the Gamecocks have played usually much better on the road. Not always, but usually better on the road than at home, Blake. Yeah, I, you know, we, we had our thoughts in the power rankings about what I think of South Carolina right now, and I may be the only one, but, um, you know, what I've seen the last three games, they've certainly played a lot better, even maybe the last five games outside the Mississippi State one. So, I think there's there's some positive momentum there, even though they haven't all resulted in wins. And so this is actually a way better game than perhaps we thought it would be uh, heading into this. And, um, you know, a couple of weeks ago, I don't know that we would have thought this would be one that find intriguing, but I, I kind of do now because of where Vanderbilt's at their first three game winning streak in SEC regular season play since 2017, South Carolina, um, a near home, you know, win against Arkansas a week or a week and a half ago. Didn't play bad at Missouri, win at Ole Miss. So quite a setup here. Uh, but yeah, I'm with you. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna take Vanderbilt because, you know, um, don't look now, but like they're in a, a pretty interesting position in terms of their potential finish in the SEC. And, you know, if they win this one, they go to seven and six. And I just think that the difference maker here is the guy who's been the difference maker for them and Liam Robbins. I just mm -hmm. think that he's you know, I said it, he's, he's one of the best players in the league, and he's probably one of the best players in the league that just does not probably get enough credit based on, you know, Vanderbilt's lack of just overall success this season. And so uh, I just look at it from that standpoint. I think it's a team that has a lot of confidence right now, having won these these games and the, specifically the teams they've beaten. And so when I look at that, um, you know, their, their, their guard play is – you know, you can, you know, you have guys that have stepped up here too, but that's really is sort of what Liam Robbins can do. And, you know, on the other side, you've got Gigi Jackson and, um, you know, obviously minutes have been a little up and down here recently, but I just think more trust in Vanderbilt. Um, even though, like I said, I, I think South Carolina is a team that is for the first time this season, perhaps finding a little bit of uh, momentum. I just think Vanderbilt has more of it right now. Yeah, the first matchup was one of those both teams exhibited their strengths when they play well in that game. For Vanderbilt, it was Robbins scoring, what was it, 22 points, blocking six shots, adding, what, seven or eight rebounds. And we've mentioned this with Carolina time and time again. There are nights that they get multiple guys scoring. G.G. Jackson scored 13 in that one, uh, but Michi Johnson and Chico Carter have been capable – of big scoring games at times. They both had those in Nashville. Hayden Brown had 12 points. I remember being at that game, and he actually had a buzzer-beating layup to send that game to overtime. So that was a case where both teams did what they needed to do uh, in order to put themselves in position to make that uh, a win, and, and Vanderbilt just came out a little bit ahead in overtime on foul shots. Yeah, uh, also a unless long time you have ago. So that there was, uh, but you're, and you're right. I, I don't disagree with you on South Carolina. Um, they are getting better. I just think that part of it, I look at body of work and Carolina dug itself a bit of a hole way back when, but um, next one, unless you got something else on that Missouri visits Auburn 
in an ESPN2 game. The computers have that as about a seven-point line in Auburn's favor with the Tigers having – the Tigers of Auburn, that is, a 73% chance to win. Um, man, I don't know what to think about this. Missouri's been playing a little better on the road. Got a win in Knoxville over the weekend. Auburn is just in a funk. Uh, I mean, I say a funk. It's really more of a schedule-induced funk, I think. Uh, been playing some tough teams lately. This one at 6 Central ESPN2, Blake, how do you see it? Well, I mean, I, I see it probably like a lot of people see it. I, I don't know what to expect here um, because, you know, for Missouri, we keep saying it's just a team that just the, the ball is bouncing their way right now and, um, you know, has been the entire season. And we kind of poke fun at, well, it's about time if you're a Missouri fan because you've been seeing it bounce the other way for years now. And, um, you know, this season things are, are going right in that regard when you get in some of these close games. You know, they're just finding ways to make those plays to win it. And so I would expect this to be, you know, somewhat similar in that I think it'll be a close game. Um, you know, Auburn has been through a, a tough stretch here, losing five or six. And I think now where Missouri just came off a win that I'm not going to say locks their NCAA tournament, you know, candidacy by, by candidacy and by any means, right? Because – like we said, there's still six games to go in SEC play. And uh, there's a lot that can happen in that stretch. But for Auburn, now I think things, you know, for them on the opposite end, they had their big shot against Alabama and, and you know, came up short. They had their shot at Tennessee, came up short. Um, obviously, we you know, we're not going to rehash all that in terms of how those games played out. But it is kind of an interesting spot now for Auburn, even at seven and five in the league. They've lost five of six. Um, you know, the Northwestern win continues to look better because, you know, Northwestern just knocks off Purdue on Sunday. And so that helps in terms of keeping that intact with a, with a quality win there. But, you know, they need more of those now. And, you know, now Missouri becomes a quality win. Um, so these are the kind of games I think Auburn has to win um, because, you know, think about it. You lose this one. <sighs> Look at the rest of the way. You know, it's like you're at Vanderbilt. You're home against Ole Miss, at Kentucky, at Alabama, home against Tennessee. I mean, this is this is as important of a game that Auburn has, right? Now. Like, this is huge because they're going to be the underdog in, I mean, it, probably at least two of their final five games after this one. So I just think, you know, we've seen this before, right, in terms of the teams that put themselves in this situation that absolutely have to have a win. We kind of said that, you know, what about Kentucky at Tennessee? I know I'm going to forget some of the other examples. Um, you know, Mississippi state's been an example in several games. Arkansas has been an example in some games, but like, I feel like Auburn's now in that spot where you can't really afford to lose six or seven, then go play a hot Vanderbilt team on Saturday. Um, because things can quickly sort of spiral the wrong direction. Mm -hmm. And you may already feel like they have because you've lost five or six, but those are, you know, those include three close losses to the three best teams in the SEC uh, in, in Alabama, A&M, and Tennessee. All those games by eight points or less, although the Alabama game felt closer than eight. So I just think Auburn finds a way to win this one. Um, again, out of necessity more than anything. But at this point, picking against Missouri, you know, is not something that will excite anyone probably because it's just they do. They, they find a way in some of these close games. and. Um, the bigger body of work says they're not, you know, consistently going to win games like they did against Tennessee on the road. And so that's why I think that, you know, I'll lean Auburn here. And by the way, I'm also going to lean Auburn here because of um, Taylor. I, I think it was Taylor on Twitter figured this out. He's like, I think you're picking against Missouri just so Missouri will win. I think you're doing the reverse mojo thing. I said, well, now you're all starting to catch on here. So. Um, you know, for my client's sake, Dennis Gates, I will, I will pick Auburn here. Um, but, but in all honesty, I, I do, I just think that this is one, look, it's the classic, you know, high powered offense, Missouri, Auburn can defend really well. I mean, Auburn defended well against Alabama, Alabama just made that run late. Um, so I, I think Bruce Pearl will get his guys, you know, we, we ne never underestimate Bruce Pearl's ability to motivate his team. And they've been right there in these last three games. They just have not been able to make those plays. 
But I think this is now so different where they got to have this one. Like there is just no doubt about it. So I think window green, you know, maybe comes out, has a big game here. Missouri's defense can be inconsistent. I think the rebounding is something that can really be big here. Look at what all Robert did rebounding wise. Look at all the loose balls they got against Alabama. I think that's maybe the storyline of this game. I think they'll rebound it well enough and get some extra opportunities and, and get the win. So I thought you were going to cite the wheel of randomness. Um, no, it's not the wheel of randomness. It's the, the wheel of, um, I don't know what it would be. The anti jinx, which that's just a, a terrible wheel of anti jinx. It's just an awful, there's no flow to that whatsoever. So we got to come no, up with something. There's better, not, but we do for Missouri fans. You, you know what I'm doing here. So, our audience will help us out with this one. Okay, last one. We go to Athens, Georgia, where the Bulldogs scored a huge win over Kentucky Saturday. Georgia had not been playing well, but got one of its better wins of the season over Kentucky, really led that game most of the way. This one is going to be on the SEC Network, 730 on Tuesday night, right after Vandy Carolina is done. Georgia is about a four-and-a-half-point favorite with a 72% chance to win. I just haven't been a believer in LSU for a while, neither of you, but the Tigers have played better. Uh, This is the first – we've talked all season about how there's sort of um, nine teams at the top, not in one bunch, four teams distinctively at the bottom, three or four, and and, and then Vanderbilt kind of in between. And, And Georgia has been more in that bottom four and this is the first game for LSU, I think, of, of that bottom four that it's had all SEC season, which is just unreal. So we'll, we'll see how Georgia, we'll see how LSU does with a break in the schedule if it hasn't been just totally demoralized by the by the beatings of late. Yeah, and that's why I would want no part of this game because I don't know what you're going to get from LSU here because we can talk about their playing better. And if you watch them, I, I do agree. But, LSU has not won this calendar year. My goodness. Well, yes, but I think something else to point but. out is like, <laughs> I mean, look, we, they're playing better, and I would agree in some spots they have played better. But of this 12-game losing streak, 10 of those are by double digits. So we can say that, but like they're still not really there with a chance to win. Um, you know, even the A&M game, that winds up being 12, but I told you, like, that game's twenty-eight to seven with like seven minutes left. But it in the was first twenty-five half. in the first half, and it's right. just yeah, like it was ugly. And so, I I, I wonder, you know, we, we talk about just something breaking a team. I mean, I don't know how this twelve-game stretch here of SEC play again, plus Texas Tech out of the mix. And I know Texas Tech has struggled in the in the Big Twelve, but that's still a team that, you know, again, is not easy to play against. So. I, I just I wonder, you know, it's just, I mean, what it's basically since that Arkansas game, December the twenty eighth. Gosh, th- I mean, it's just been a brutal stretch, and, and I have no idea if you know at some point you're like, well, LSU has to win, right? I, I guess, like, but I just this is one we circle because we're like, okay, the way Georgia's playing, this is before the Kentucky game, we're like, surely this is kind of that spot, but. I don't know, man. It's just, I don't know if it is the spot. Like, because Georgia is coming off a big win. They got all this momentum. Um, you know, you talk about stuff that's at stake. I mean, Georgia, they win this game. They're at six and seven in the league. And, I mean, you know, I, their their schedule is pretty tough the rest of the way. But, like, what if that, what if Georgia got to, like, it's not, it's probably not going to happen. But, like, what if they got to nine and nine in the league or something? Like, it's just, you think about that and where they were last season and all this. But, I don't know if they're getting the the nine and nine in the league, but man, I just I think I'm at a point now where I'm just I think I got to pick Georgia. I just don't know how I can pick LSU because yeah. um, I wonder again just the toll this 12 game SEC streak has taken on, on them or, or 12 game losing streak. Um, yeah, I, I don't have a great. This is one I would completely stay away from. In all honesty, I just I don't love this one at all. So uh, I, I think Cario Quindo, Terry Roberts. That duo, um, you know, I think if you look at K.J. Williams on the other side, right, you've got a guy like Braylon Bridges, I think, who can, you know, perhaps put himself in a position to, uh, you know, do some things to maybe make that a little harder on K.J. Williams. But I just – 
I, I like I hate it for LSU because this is again just been such a, a streak here that no one wants to to be on. But I think I'll go Georgia, and I don't. This is no confidence whatsoever. But surely it's got in for LSU at some point. But I just if Georgia not beating Kentucky, I'd probably pick LSU here. But Georgia just beat Kentucky, so I'll go with the dogs. Speaking oh. of dogs, I've I've had it on uh, mute Oreo's as long as I could. Or he got he his is, pick in for the game. So. He is hurting. Man, hearing you talk about the time. But you know what else hurts? This this will hurt your eyes. I don't. Well, no, you can't see it. Their I Ken Palm do. profile is, you know, green is wins and pink is losses. Yeah, a lot of boy. The, the losses are really building up, as you can tell. Um, thank God that stopped. <laughs> Just getting his pick. LSU wins, wrong with that. wins 12 of the first 13, and, and darn near beats Kansas State. So it would have been 13 of 13 to start, and then 12 straight losses. Uh, LSU could lose out if it can't win in Georgia. Like, this is the thing you look at the winnable games, okay? We said, hey, circle that stretch against Georgia, South Carolina, Vanderbilt, Ole Miss. Well, in, in typical LSU fashion, that too is gone askew. Yeah. Uh, because Georgia just got a big win against Kentucky. If you want to catch South Carolina, it has generally been in Columbia rather than in your building. Carolina just plays better on the road. Vandy, that one looked in, in Baton Rouge like a LSU. They're the underdog now. On that slight one. lean. Yeah. They are. Ken Palm's got <laughs> Vandy a one-point favorite. Vandy is playing its best ball of the year by far. And, and then you got Ole Miss, but that one's in Oxford. Like, if you get that in Baton Rouge, you you feel like they're probably favored, but <laughs> they got to win. And then at Florida, it's good. They're going to have, they're going to win a couple. I mean, these, you right? say this yeah. could be the, could be the Bryce Drew specialty in the year. Nah, they're they're going to win a couple of these. They got to. Yeah. They got to. So, Missouri fans better hope it's not on March the 1st. So, oh, that would be bad. Parting thoughts. Um, no. I just, you know, this is an interesting one. Like we said, when you look at this slate, um, Auburn, Missouri is obviously, it's, it's a big game. Like I said, I, I just think this is, it's big for both teams, but man, Auburn, like this, this is getting to must win territory now because, you know, you look at the rest of the way and the schedule. And so I'm fascinated by that matchup uh, with Missouri coming off of, you know, a huge confidence boost, boosting win at Tennessee. And, you know, it'll be interesting to see just kind of how that matchup plays out. But yeah, even like I said, even Vanderbilt, South Carolina is interesting now, and even George LSU is interesting for different reasons. So this was a slate that I think we would have looked at a week ago and said, Ugh, you know, not a great slate here, even two weeks ago. But it's a little more interesting than than we would think. So, oh, you're muted. The Oreo mute continues. The Oreo mute did continue. Uh, it's going to be interesting on the stretch. We'll be here for it. We got bracketology coming up. Uh, Monday morning, we got our recaps up Monday morning. We got power rankings. We got baseball when we find the time to do it. We're trying to get everybody previewed before the season starts Friday. We'll have previews of Friday's games in baseball this weekend. Yeah, uh, We're going to do if the best comes we can, up in folks. Football, um, we, got, if, we got football stuff playing this week. Um, if we don't get to your favorite team, don't hold it against sleep us. Sleep is optional, maybe. We're we're sprinting at this point, so we are. Um, we will we will do the best we can. We hold no biases uh, outside of Dennis Gates, and you know, so baseball fans, we're we're doing the best we can for you. So we we are literally covering forty two teams, and and frankly, I'm glad that Texas and Oklahoma are not here yet because then that would make it forty eight mm. between football, baseball, basketball. Yeah, got women's basketball coming too. Let's just, oh, let's just get this yeah, thing up. Don't to, don't even involve me in that. This thing to sixty four. I need, like, I need my just, sleep. No, you're 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 in every one of them. You're in every video. So. Oh, thanks. Hit subscribe. All right. <laughs> Enough of the rambling. Hit the like button, the subscribe button. That helps us out. Thank you for watching. We're Southeastern fourteen. We'll see you again soon.